Welcome back to CCTV. On today's menu, highlights of the social event, an interview on the future of GHS and breaking news on ChemCon Asia 2017. But first we start with the Q&A on Reach. Thinking about or working on in preparation for the possibility of reapplying at four years, seven years, 12 years, you know, I was hoping that you might be able to elaborate further on what those expectations might be. I think the key is addressing the uncertainties that were highlighted in the initial evaluation. And as the opinions have rolled on, I think they've become more explicit in trying to highlight what those uncertainties are and what they mean. So that would be the starting point. Um, I think for REC that's always going to be looking at the operational conditions, risk measures and the exposures. So are they still appropriately limited? You know, I think that's, that's a, a pretty much a no-brainer. The big challenge is on the SEAC side, I think very clearly. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be a SEAC ball game, this one. Report progress on identifying alternatives and substitution. That will be, I think all the indications are very heavily followed by NGOs and by civil society organizations who will have expectations. They already have them. Um, I think Julius referred to this in some detail. And ultimately, do the benefits of the use of the substance still outweigh the risks? I think they, if you've answered the second question on the alternatives, the third one pretty much falls into place. A confusing to me is where does the community rolling action plan, so the chemicals on CORAP, how do they fit in to reach an authorization? Or do they? Substance evaluation is something where we think that there is a potential concern, but we don't have enough information on those substances. So, so CORAP is, is the list of substances where we think that we need to get more information on top of what we have, for example, in the registration dossiers. Uh, and then um, in, uh, when we are going to the authorization <coughs> route, we alre already know that we have enough information to consider them as substances of very high concern. And so how does that go for substances of very high concern? But those are then already on a different route. Time to find out more about yesterday's social event. Karen, where are you? Hi, Chaird. I'm still here at the Royal Ontario Museum, or ROM, location of last night's social event. Earlier this week, I told you that the city of Toronto is the most multicultural city in the world. And the ROM is an important cultural heart, not only just to the city of Toronto, but also to the entire country. As Canada's largest museum, visitors can explore both the natural world and world cultures. There are over six million artifacts and specimens in the ROM's collection. Tens of thousands of these items are presented in the ROM's public displays, showcasing art, archaeology, and natural science. A famous icon from the culture of Canada's First Peoples is the totem pole. The ROM houses four totem poles, all made from western red cedar trees. This one, the tallest, is 25 meters or 80 feet tall. They were carved by the Niska and Haida peoples of Canada's Pacific Northwest Coast and were received by the ROM in the early 1920s. These particular totem poles are known as crest poles because they contain carved crests. If you look closely at these crests, you will see beautiful carvings symbolizing the mythology, the culture, and the spirituality of Canada's First Peoples. During yesterday's social event, our delegates had the option not only to admire these totem poles, but also to learn more about Canada's First Peoples. Our delegates also got a chance to see the world's first display of Futalankasaurus, a giant long-necked sauropod. One of the biggest animals to have ever walked the earth, this dinosaur stretches 110 feet, or over 33 meters long, and weighed as much as 10 elephants. Impressive! It must have been a big puzzle to get all the pieces of the giant sauropod together. Uh, out of curiosity, how did they get the totem poles inside the museum? Yes, it is quite a big puzzle. These totem poles weren't brought into the building. The building was built around the totem poles. Thank you very much once again for all these interesting details. Later in the bulletin we connect again since I heard you have breaking news on the location of ChemCon Asia 2017. 
That was yesterday. And now we have again a full day ahead of interesting presentations. Among others, we will talk about the practical implementation of GHS, the Global Harmonized System. GHS, and especially its future, is something I discussed in today's interview with Christian Grundling and Francis Tudo. To what extent has GHS been adopted by countries today? We're, we're, I wouldn't say we're completely done with it, but it's been adopted with the, all of the major economies and the most complicated ones in a way because it's all the countries that used to have legislation in place. The problem we are facing in Europe is a little bit more the direct link between the classification according to GHS and the downstream legislation, which really makes it very difficult to predict what's going to happen. Uh, how far is GHS harmonization feasible across the countries and the areas of application? I think uh, overall the harmonization goal is quite good already. If you decide not to get a full harmonization, you deliberately have to choose not to do it. Like in Europe, deliberately not to implement certain hazard classes. Well, no, we implement it all, but mm -hmm. hazard categories. What is the state of GHS implementation in industry? In industry, GHS is everywhere. What else do you think uh, makes GHS a success? Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's the Esperanto. You can have a dialogue between industry, between enforcement, between government, between your own customers. Uh, and there is always, even if, when there is dispute and dissension on a country-specific implementation, you can always refer to the Purple Book. We have copies of it, you know, and, and you can have a conversation with anybody uh, that know, know the basics. So this is, this is really a great achievement. Please watch the complete interview on our website and YouTube channel. So much on the future of GHS, but part of our future is already happening today. I will talk about that with Tom Grumbles, president from the Product Stewardship Society. Tom, can you tell us more about the Product Stewardship Society? Absolutely. The Product Stewardship Society was formed a little over three years ago. We were formed under the umbrella of the American Industrial Hygiene Association, which allowed us to start fast. We have over 2,500 product stewards on board now. They come from all sizes of companies and all segments of the supply chain. And your statement is? Product stewardship is vitally important for industry and each company should have at least one product steward. I fully agree and then at least I should also attend one CAMCON a year. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. You're welcome. And before we finalize with today's forecast, let's connect with Karen to learn more about her breaking news on CAMCON Asia 2017. Oh, hi, Cheered. I'm here at the East Asian Galleries of the ROM enjoying extraordinary works of art. During yesterday's social event, our delegates created an appetite for your next Asian event by admiring works of art from Japan, China and Korea. And next year's ChemCon Asia will be in one of these countries. You're great in creating suspense, but you know I'm very curious. Where are we going next year? Okay, cheered. I won't keep you or our audience in suspense any longer. I'm very excited to announce that in June 2017, these doors will open and ChemCon will welcome all friends to China. Beautiful Beijing awaits you. One of my favorite cities. Exciting. Thanks, Karen. Talk to you tomorrow. That's the forecast for 2017. Now the forecast of the day. Also this morning we focus on Asia with Korea, Japan, Thailand and Malaysia and many more in Southeast Asia. In the afternoon a round table on chemical industry towards a more sustainable future. Before we put our purple spotlights on the implementation of the global harmonized system in Asia Pacific, Europe and the Americas. Thank you for watching and have a great day.